Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. You know, the markets have been, well, pretty bad recently. And so I figured I'd take a look at a topic that's probably going to be a bit more prevalent, especially if the markets are performing poorly, and especially if rates are going up. And that is the topic of bankruptcy. Can we reliably predict bankruptcy? So there's a couple of scores out there that do it, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a particular one of them, the Olsen O score. You might have heard of it, you might not, but if you want to watch a video about it, this is the one. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. The Olsen O score came to be around about 40 years ago. It seems like such a long time actually thinking about it. 1980, when James Olsen, the score's namesake, develops the score as an alternative to the Altman Z score. Now, both these scores use different things to try and predict the solvency of businesses. So if we pull up the formula for this Olsen O score, you can see it's not a pleasant one at all. And it requires things like Total assets, it requires total liabilities, working capital, current liabilities, current assets, and a whole lot of other information. You throw it all in there and you get out a number. We then convert that number to a probability and that probability ranges on a scale of zero to one. If your company scores a one, then the Olsen score predicts that that company is going to go insolvent over the next couple of years. And then if the company has a score of zero, in a good financial standing, so it's unlikely that that company will go insolvent. So the O score is said to be quite accurate, more accurate than the Altman Z score, and in some cases it can be up to 90% accurate. Now in a bull market, that is not the case, and we're going to look at some companies that I ran the score for back last year, but the reason that's not the case is that funds are so easy to get when you're in a raging bull market like we've been. So back when I ran this score last year in July, we'd already had that big dip from, uh, from COVID and things were starting to be back on the up. Money was easy to come by. Stimulus was coming out. Everyone could get their hands on cheap money at 0% interest rates. Things were just booming, basically. But as we move into a market where getting that financing is a lot more questionable, and as we move into a market where you're going to find it hard to raise capital just from anywhere. That's when this score could really start to stand out. I don't have data though for bear markets. I do have data from when I ran this score last July, and that's what we're gonna talk about at least a little bit before we move on to current data, data that I ran and got today. So back in July, when I ran this score, there were 68 companies that came back with a score a probability, not a score, a probability of one. And like I said, that probability of one means that this company is guaranteed to declare bankruptcy in the next two years. You don't want your company to have a probability of one for declaring bankruptcy. So did any of these companies declare bankruptcy yet? Um, yeah, they did. And when I say, yeah, it's not really bankruptcy. You know, companies generally get beat down, especially if they own a patent of some sorts. But, you know, they get beat down. A competitor comes in, swipes up those assets for 10 cents on the dollar, and they still live today. But yeah, those two companies that have vanished, one of them is a company that's called Neurotrope. Now, just looking up Neurotrope, it was a pharmaceutical company that was working on an Alzheimer's drug candidate and that did not work out at all. So it was absorbed by a different privately held company that makes an erectile dysfunction treatment. I don't know how Alzheimer's and erectile dysfunction connect, but somewhere along the lines they did. And I would consider this company bankrupt in the sense that, you know, it failed at what it was trying to do. Whatever it had left was absorbed into a privately held pharmaceutical company. The second company that went through a bit of a weird path is one called Restore Bio. It's all one word, but the T-O-R was capitalized, Restore Bio. That's a weird name. But they went from a 52-week high of $10 plus all the way down to like 80 cents. Bumped up a bit when the reverse merger was announced, but that is not good enough. I wouldn't, again, call it a bankruptcy, but it's as close to as it can be. Now, there are those other 66 companies that were on this list having scored a one. And 
this is the weird part. And I think, again, it comes back to we were just in such a perfect market for companies that need capital. So they were able to thrive. They were Maybe they were able to hang on just that little bit longer, especially because the score tends to skew towards the highly speculative plays like biotech. So those highly speculative plays in biotech were able to hang on just that little bit longer, push through that drug that they needed to push through, and they were able to succeed and beat this score. So those companies returned a whopping 56% since July 1st, which is kind of the inverse of what you would have expected from a score that predicts bankruptcy. It's 56% over this basket of 66 companies compared to the S&P 500's 23-ish percent. Now, some standouts from that list. One company is Microvision. They benefited massively. I think if you'd have invested $100 back on July 1st, it'd be worth $800 today. So, you know, $1,000 to $8,000. That's astronomical. And the reason for that is because they sell LiDAR products. So they are a beneficiary of a buzzword, at least at this time. Another company, and this is almost perfect timing on the recording of this video, this company is called Second Sight. And they just, as in hours ago, got approval from the FDA for their prosthetics in the eyes. I haven't quite read into it a lot. That's not what this video is about. But this company, anyway, has returned like 400% today. It's up a decent amount since July 1st. Obviously, if it returns 400% in a day, it's up a decent amount. I think that this is probably one of those companies that maybe through these markets was able to get that extra financing and hang on until it could find a successful niche or a successful market or even, you know, wait for that FDA approval to succeed. If you're interested at all about the Olsen score of a stock from back in July, maybe you just want to see how it performed on a particular stock in your portfolio, drop a comment below and I can grab that data for you. I don't have it for every stock. I have it for about 3,500 US publicly traded stocks. So yeah, drop a comment below if you want data for a particular stock. That's where I'll put it. I'll respond to everyone that wants it. For now though, we've got to move on to today's data. Again, I have this score for around about 3,500 stocks and it will be in the description below in a Google spreadsheet. So you can open it, you can search for the stock that you're interested in and it should be there. If you're interested at all about how that data was collected or anything, anything about this score, anything about the Altman Z score too, because I have run that one. If you're interested at all about any of these stocks, any of these scores, drop a comment below. I want to start a discussion and I'd love to talk to you about, well, predicting bankruptcy. But yeah, let's take a dive into the data that we just got for the Olsen O score today and see, well, who's predicted to go bankrupt this time. So the list is much smaller, especially for those scoring that perfect one or imperfect one, I guess. The list is much smaller. I've actually never heard of any of these companies except Genius Brands. Now, I know that that one got a lot of hype over the past year, so maybe that hype is a bit too much. And if you own Genius Brands, I'm just going off of this one score. I'm not saying it's a poor investment. And as we've seen, that one score led to 56% returns if you bet against it over the last six-ish months. Other companies include some of these. We've got Aikido Pharma, we've got BioV, Bit Digital, we've got GT Biopharma, we've got Ken Pharma, we've got Nanovirucides. So yeah, there's a lot of medical companies again in this list. And it goes with what I've said all throughout this video. I think that, you know, these companies tend to, obviously, they don't really have a lot of assets when they are in the exploration phase of building a new drug. They are building something, they are waiting for FDA approval, they are doing all these trials. It's really just a case of, does this drug work? If it does, that's a successful company, it will beat this score. If it doesn't, the company's probably going to go bankrupt or get absorbed by someone else, which is as close to bankruptcy as you can get. So yeah, watch out for pharmaceutical companies, especially when they're on this list, unless you have an in-depth knowledge of what they are trying to create. That's the best takeaway I could give you from this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, 
please click the subscribe button below. I make quirky data videos like this once or twice a week. I also make videos where I discuss different stocks, probably some that we're going to see in this list today. And I'm also working on a website where you can get much easier access to this data and strategies of proven investors. People like Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger or Tobias Carlyle with his Acquirers Fund. They are going to be on this website when it launches in hopefully a month. So if you want to keep tabs on that, click that subscribe button and please give this video a thumbs up and comment. Like I said throughout, I want comments. I want to know what stocks you like, what stocks you don't like. I want to know what stocks you're interested in with this score or the Altman Z score. Let me know below. I'd love to talk to you about anything stock market related. But yeah, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.